Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, continuing the things you may have missed in Elden Ring series, we're going to be covering Stormvale Castle. I've broken this down into 12 tips, but what I essentially ended up doing was just reviewing every single part of the castle. So this is basically a full walkthrough of every area in the castle, including pretty much every missable item bar some pretty obvious ones that you will just come across as you're progressing through this area there's a few more minor ones right at the start and then it gets really juicy towards the middle of the video so firstly, from the grace right outside of the castle, obviously you can go through the door in front of me and you'll come across Gostock, which we will talk about shortly. But before that, turn right. You can run down these steps and see a very obvious full calling finger remedy. However, when you're on your way back up to the grace again, look to your left and you'll see there's a wooden platform you can jump on. When you get to the end of this platform, you'll be rewarded with a few fire grease. It's not the most awesome item we're going to see in this video, but it's a it's a nifty little hidden area before you even get into the castle, so I thought I'd include it. Then just teleport back to the site of Grace or run around to get back where you started. Now for the next tip, we're going to be talking about Gatekeeper Gostock. He is definitely not missable, but what you do with him is... Firstly, if you kill him now... That's not the worst idea, honestly. It's a little known fact that a few people may not know is that every time you die in Stormvale Castle, if Gostock is left alive, he will come and loot your corpse and steal some of your runes. So you'll find that when you go back and reclaim your runes, you're picking back up less than you died with, because Gostock fucking steals them. So if you want to kill him, you'll stop that from happening. Also, later on in the castle, which we'll touch in a later tip, he will trap you in a room with a particularly tough enemy. However, again, if you kill him now, you can't be trapped. But despite all that, I recommend leaving him alive because in the most recent patch a few days ago, FromSoft actually gave him a proper quest line. I haven't found out what it is yet, but I'd say leave him alive and hopefully someone may even know how to progress his quest, or if not, we can find out together in a later video. So that's it for Gatekeeper Gostock for now. We'll revisit him again later on. You're just the kind of tarnish that I like. Okay, on to tip three. The next few small areas are very self-explanatory. Kill a bunch of birds, get to the next grace. You'll find yourself walking up a big wooden platform. But before you head up the stairs, which is the next area of progression, you want to head underneath them through this room full of barrels and boxes. There'll be an enemy at the back who shouldn't be any problem for you. And then you'll find a pretty juicy dex weapon. The hook claws are great because they're crazy fast. Their bleed buildup is really good. And because they have no particular affinity, you can apply any ashes of war you want and any grease that you want so they can have any scaling any elements any ashes of war they're very versatile for bleed based dex builds carry on working away up the platforms just be careful for the enemies with the fire bombs and all the explodey barrels around there's nothing that missable around here though so i've skipped ahead to the top just as you get to this door now this is where if you have left gostock alive like i have in this video you'll see he closes the door on you traps you in with this enemy If you die to the enemy, don't worry, because what it will mean is that now that you've already triggered the trap, you can come back in and fight him normally, and you can cheese him and bait him around if you need to. But if you do manage to beat him first time, congratulations, well done. You can then go and grab the loot in the room, which is a curved sword talisman over in the chest over here. And then more importantly, the rusty key, which is going to unlock the door to the next area. So now you can head out and open the door that Goss Twat closed on us and be on your way. Tip 5. We have come to the first very juicy, very missable area in Stormvale Castle, and it includes an optional boss. After you've used the rusty key and worked your way up through the next part, you will eventually come to the Rampart Tower site of Grace. Now you want to just head outside, be very careful of these birds, because as we all know, birds are an absolute nuisance as it is. These ones all have explosive barrels tied to their feet that they will lob at you and will do an extreme amount of damage. You can head over to where I have and hop over this ledge and then drop down. There's nothing around one side, however, come to the other side and you can drop down onto a very small ledge and shimmy along it. Drop down again to pick up a very mediocre shield that you probably just want to sell. 
And now you can drop down again and again and again. Oh my god, no, what have you done? You fool, you're gonna die. Oh, oh no, it's okay, we're alive. Holy Jesus. <laughs> okay, kill the scarab, grab the ashes of war quick before they run away. Cool, storm assault, never used it, but looks pretty cool. And now be very, very careful because there is a crucible knight here. And if you fought the one in the ever jail, yeah, I know, I said it right. I said ever jail, holy crap. Thank you everyone in the comments that called it out. Uh, yes, if you fought the Crucible Knight in the Everjail in Limgrave, you'll know these guys are insanely fucking powerful. Or you can just cheese it to death with poison arrows like I did. Once he's dead, you'll be rewarded with a very mediocre faith spell and, like, no souls. So, that's really good. But, <laughs> yay, well done you, you killed a Crucible Knight. Now, just head towards the end, and you'll see there's a lift that will pop you up back at the site of Grace that we were just at at the start of this tip. Congrats. I've skipped the next little bit of the castle because it's pretty self-explanatory. Eventually, you'll find yourself in this room here, and there will be a grafted scion boss. Once he's dead, you can grab the Highland Axe off the corpse at the foot of the massive picture at the end of his room. Just be careful of the dudes on your right-hand side. There's a few there's a few mobs there that you want to clear out. And then what I'm going to do is just talk you through all of the rooms and all of the missable things that connect to this main hall to make sure that you're collecting all the items that you can. So, turning back around and facing the other way, go through the room at the end on your left. There'll be a couple of dogs in here to kill. Some of them might drop loot. You see I got a lump of flesh. But the really good reason for coming in this room is the Crimson Hood, which is one of a few pieces of headgear in this game that actually increases your stats. So as you see, when I equip it, my vigor increases and therefore my health increases. Plus, looks kind of cool. Now head out of this room and turn immediately left. You'll find another lift which will take you back up to the site of grace we were at just a few minutes ago. I let it go up just to trigger the contraption so I can use it as a shortcut later, but I jumped off again because we don't want to go up there yet. Now you can head out and go through the next door on your left, turn right and you can grab a level 2 somber smithing stone, and then as long as you've got a stone sword key you can go through this room here. Now be careful in here because there's two massive exiles with the giant axes. You'll see I fumble big time here because I always forget you have to manually get rid of the message that says stone sword key lost with use. So <laughs> I wasn't able to swing my sword, so I'm just looking at him like, Oh, uh, uh, hi, how does this work? And, and then he, he hits me. Cool, so when they're dead, you can grab a shield and a dagger. I've never used daggers, so I can't comment, but this one does have 140 crit, so... I'm guessing if you're stacking crit, if, if crit builds are a thing in this game, then that's kind of cool. And then most importantly, an iron wet blade, which will unlock more options for you as you're doing your ashes of war. And then there's a pointless dead end ledge with an enemy that I let completely gank me as I tried to go out. So kill him dead and then you're done in here. And finally, if you head back into the main hall again where the grafted scion boss was and go out the far left door here that you see me going through, you can take the next left again. Just be wary of the enemy waiting to gank you up the top and then you can grab 10 arrows off the corpse at the end. Then finally, hop back down and look out of the door in front of you you'll see a courtyard full of exiles with swords and flamethrowers and crossbows and all sorts. What I would advise doing is just beelining it through the courtyard, maybe hug the edge or run through the middle if you're brave enough. Where you can see I'm pointing my bow, there is a sight of grace inside that room there. Sprint to there, light up the sight of grace, then it doesn't matter if an enemy follows you in there and kills you because you've lit the sight of grace so you will respawn there. Then you can rest to reset all the enemies and you can clear out the courtyard from back to front. Right, I'll meet you there and we'll go on to tip seven where I'll clear out the courtyard and show you all the items in here. Once you've cleared out the courtyard, there's only a few items of note here. Just run around and get all the loot. I won't specifically call out anything unless it's really important. So once you've cleared out all the enemies and got the loot from the towers and stuff, the only really important thing here is this painting. So head in this room here and grab the prophecy painting. And essentially how the paintings work, you want to find the area of the world where you can see this exact viewpoint, this exact perspective. And if you're stood in the right location and your screen looks exactly as is detailed in the picture, right where you're standing will be a spectral artist sat on his chair with his easel in front of him. And when you get near him, he will disappear and there'll be some loot in his place. Some of the loot from some of these paintings is really good, honestly. Sometimes it's an absolute pain to try and figure out where they're sat. So I won't judge you if you Google a few of them. I know I did. And also you'll find there's another one of them statues like we saw in Nimgrave that's got 
smithing stones in it. When you get right near the end of Stormvale Castle, there will be a big giant that can smash it open. Unfortunately, the ogre sat in front of it can't smash it open. He's not strong enough to do so. I think that's exactly why they put him there, to trick you and make you think that he can. So I'll revisit that in a later tip and show you the giant that you have to bring back to smash open the statue to get access to the smithing stones. And the final area of importance off the courtyard, as you're facing back down the main stairs, you wanna head to the right and you can go in a little tunnel. And in here will be a few rats that you can kill, but more importantly is another stone sword key room. You'll find a God Slayer's seal in here and also a Godskin prayer book. The seal increases the potency of Godslayer incantations, and as you've probably guessed, the Godskin prayer book gives you access to a few Godslayer incantations. Now continue heading out of the room, and you're back in another big open area. Look down to the left-hand side of you, and you'll see a load of exiles on Ballista. However, before dropping down and clearing them out, go back the other way again, hook round to the right from where you just came out, and you'll see there's a ladder leading up. There's a series of platforms and ladders, enemies and loot up there. Go and explore that at your leisure, and I'll meet back up with you for the next tip once you've explored that area. There's nothing really missable, there's nothing of note, so I'll meet you in tip 8. Now that you've cleared out all of the platforms and rooftops, come back down the last ladder that you went up, and you'll be in the area you see me at now. From there, you can go back onto the wooden bridge and jump over, like you see me doing, to take out the guy with the ballista here. Work your way along, killing the guys with the ballistas, and then you can hop down and work your way down the stairs back towards the front gate. Clear out all the exiles here as well. And once you're done, you'll come upon this massive wolf beast thing here. After just taking out as many exiles as you have, you're probably quite low on healing and mana, or FP, should I say. So sprint past him and get inside the room, and you'll see there's a grace site not too far in. Once you're rested up and you've got all your healing items back, you can go and try and tackle him if you want. He is a bit tough, but he is also cheesable. And when you kill him, you'll be rewarded with a somber smithing stone, beast blood, and some old fangs. You can now continue heading back down all the way to the main gate. And you'll see there's a site of grace just to the right hand side in a little room. In there is also a lever that will open the main gate for you. And then you can go and loot the bodies in front of the main gate that will give you a few golden runes. Just be very careful if you didn't opt to clear out the Ballista guys, because they will fuck your shit up. At this point, if you want, you can also go back and speak to Gostok. He's now become a merchant, though the items that he sells are quite rubbish, honestly. I've come into some fine goods. For tip 9, you've probably seen at the lift side chamber site of Grace that we unlocked earlier. There's a locked door, and it says you it can't be opened from this side. It's at this point that we're going to use the lift that's in the room. Even though the lift isn't currently on your level, this is one of the few lifts in the game where you can pull the lever and it will actually work without you needing to trigger the lift first. So pull the lever, jump on the lift and head up, follow the only path you can take, and eventually you'll come to a few of them living jars on your left hand side. You may as well kill them all because when you do you'll see that you now have access to two cracked pots which are great for anyone that's making use of consumable items on your run through this does actually unlock a shortcut to the end boss to godric but we're not we're going to ignore that for now and i'll come back to that later for now run on the wooden platform that i'm on here Grab the cookery off that body, and then you can jump up onto the ledge against the wall. You then want to make another particularly annoying jump onto that ledge. Once you're through there, head right and go through this door. Through that next room, and then out up the stairs. Be careful not to fall off and back down where you just came from. There are three level 2 smithing stones on your right that you can jump onto the ledge and grab if you want to. Now head back the other way, looting the items as you go. Clear out this room full of the gossed up looking dickheads. You'll be able to grab a decent tower great shield from under the stairs once you've cleared the room. Now out here is another mini platforming section. Hug the left wall and jump onto that little ledge again. Jump down, jump down again, jump down again. If you very carefully jump, you can get the level 5 golden rune on the corpse on this wall here. And then finally... 
finally, after all that platforming, just run along here and up these stairs, and you are now on the other side of the door. And that brings us to tip number 10, this whole new area we've just unlocked. And we'll go through what is in this area in the next tip. At the top and the middle section of this area, there's a few bats around and a few items. It's all very self-explanatory, so I'll let you go through it, and I'm just going to beeline it to the bottom and talk you through the important bit. So I'll meet you there. Once you're down here, there's a few rats and a, and a few more items. Again, I'm just going to sprint through and get to the good bit. Okie dokie. When you jump down here, you will face the Ulcerated Tree Spirit mini-boss. Though, he is stronger than quite a few regular bosses in this game. He can be an absolute beast. He's so erratic, and his attacks cover such a wide area. Feel free to try and beat him if you reckon you can. I'm sure you will absolutely smash it. If I can do it, anyone can. However, he is cheesable. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of this because I only found out about it after I'd already recorded this. But I can talk you through most of the steps if you are struggling with him or just want to cheese him anyway. You're going to need to sprint past him as quick as you can, hug the wall so that when he bursts up out of the ground, he doesn't knock you over, climb up the ladder, and once you're at the top, jump off because th these are steps that you need to do anyway. This is the way that you go once you have beaten him. Then, once you jump off, immediately do a 180 and go through the Stone Sword key room that we opened earlier. Kill the few enemies in there and go out onto the platform with the Exile with the Torch. It is, it's still a dead end, nothing has changed. However, now that the boss has spawned, if you look directly below you, you'll see the boss is below you. You will need arrows or some kind of consumable. Fire bombs work brilliantly. He dies in about 12 to 16 fire bombs, depending on what your stats are like. Just, just drop items on his head. Just kill him with fire and arrows and magic. It really is that easy if you want to or need to cheese him. Right, we'll now move on to tips 11 and 12 and wrap up the rest of the area. For this next tip, head back to the Rampart Bonfire, and where we unlocked the Crucible Knight shortcut lift earlier, head to the right and run up the stairs. Be careful because there'll be an Exile with a spear in front of you, and also one with a crossbow shooting you from behind. So quickly take them both out, and then you can hop over to where the crossbow guy was and grab the throwing daggers. Now you want to run towards where the other exile came through, and you can run either left or right, there's nothing missable. They both loop round to the same exit. There's about five more exiles out here, and unless you can snipe the guy with the horn, he will signal them all to attack. But you've fought enough by now, you should be absolutely fine taking them out. Once you've killed them all, come back to the wall with the sandbags where you entered into the area and it's time for another platforming section. Follow my path to jump down, and eventually you'll come to two level 2 smithing stones. Come back round to where you jump down, and you'll see this big nasty bastard here. I know we've dealt with a lot of birds up to this point, but he's got about three times the amount of health, and double the damage to all the others, so snipe him or cheese him if you can. If not, just uh, kill him before he kills you. The only bit of loot here is a new gesture that you can grab if you want to and then head back over the rooftops again and jump up where you see me going now. Kill the four exiles in this area and then climb up the ladder. And up here you'll find a claw talisman, which is incredible because it increases the damage you do with jumping attacks, which is a technique I need to use in this game a lot more than I do because it's great for staggering bosses. If you time it right, you can even jump onto the other roof as well. But all that's there is a lot of birds and they're all going to fly away before you even manage to uh, kill them. So feel free to just head back down the ladder. And that's it. Now we'll move on to the final area and getting to the boss. Back at the lift side chamber, Sight of Grace, head into the courtyard. But this time go left. You'll see a few more birds. I'm sure you know how to deal with them by now. You can swing round to the left and go up the stairs to kill an axe-wielding exile and get a smithing stone level 2. And then continue onwards and go in the room on the right and you'll encounter Nefeli Lu. I won't spoil exactly who she is or what her story is, you'll find that out yourself. But what you do need to do is exhaust her dialogue and then you can summon her to help you fight Godric. Also, on your way out, don't miss, in the left-hand corner there is four smithing stone level 1 that you can grab. And then just outside, on your right-hand side, is a golden seed. 
Now you'll come across the giant who you need to lead all the way back so that he can smash the statue for you. Every time I've done this, he has just ran straight back with me, but he was being a right bitch this time. So I'll do a bit of a time loop here so you can see me trying to bait him back to the statue. I also forgot to kill the ogre and the dog, so watch me also try and deal with all three of them at the same time. Somehow, miraculously, I don't die. And then you're rewarded for your efforts with five level one smithing stones and a level two. Now head back up the stairs behind where the giant was. On your right hand side you'll see a little room with the Sight of Grace and on the left hand side you'll see one of the summon statues that you need to activate if you want to use player summons for this boss. Once you've rested at the Sight of Grace, as long as you exhausted Nefeli Lu's dialogue, you'll see her summon sign appears on the right hand side right in front of the boss gate. You don't need to summon her to progress her quest line and I actually advise against it because she will double the boss's health just like summons always do and she's useless. She just stands in front of him and dies. So if you need summons, you've always got your spirit ashes. You can use players if you need to, but I reckon you can solo him. You've got this. As always, I'm going to try to spoil the game as little as possible for you, so I won't show you Godric. I'll let you experience him for the first time yourself. But that's it from me. Please let me know if any of these tips helped. It genuinely really interests me. I really, really hope that all of these videos are actually helpful for people. And let me know if there is any other Elden Ring guides you would like to see from me. I'll be doing Lyurnia of the Lakes for the next video. And after that, the open world opens up way more than it has done up until this point. So if there's a particular area that you want to see next, just let me know and I will do my best to accommodate. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.